so long time no see i haven't been posting videos for a while and you may have noticed but um, um i've been busy you know going to work and everything so i haven't been able to come uh, and pass by to um, record videos but uh today we're going to look at a very uh, interesting problem i learned this when i was in high school but i uh, learned it through in the internet right so i looked up some videos and um, some links about this method okay and it's a uh, Feynman's integral okay Feynman's method of integration uh, which is very cool I think uh, to look at so when you get to find integrals of this type or other types as well you can use Feynman's integral it's very elegant to do it okay compared to other methods but of course it's it's the long way right so it's not going to uh, be good to do in a test so it's just to you know contemplate how beautiful okay this method is but uh we're gonna look at this um this case this looks at like a very intimidating integral right it's like okay uh, uh, x to the big power uh, over L log of x uh, i don't want to do it right so uh, but we're going to use Feynman's method of integration find richard Feynman was a very uh, famous physicist and mathematician uh, who contributed a lot to nuclear physics and um, he also participated in the Manhattan Project. But today we're going to look at one of his um, achievements, one of his methods he used to solve these sort of integrals that look just like, you know, impossible to do. But uh, in this case, it's not an impossible. You could use several methods to do it, but uh, Feynman's method is my favorite. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, Feynman's integration, okay? Uh, it's also good to know that uh, this method requires knowledge of Leibniz's um, integration under, I mean, differentiation under the integral sign. So essentially what you're doing is differentiating when there is two, or when there's more than one variable un under, the integral, under an integral, right? So if you have two variables, okay, multivariable function, and you want to differentiate that, you can differentiate under the integral sign, under specific conditions. But we're not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about the method. We're going to skip those proofs. Okay, I think it's not my level to explain those proofs. My, my level is not appropriate for that. But uh, this is just, okay, to look how interesting it is. So let's take a look at the integral from 0 to 1. Okay, of x to the power of 15 minus 1. All of that divided by log of x dx. Okay, so first things we think about is how to get rid of the log of x or if maybe this looks like a uh, one of the elementary integrals but it really doesn't so what we have to do okay we're going to use Feynman's method of integration so Feynman said that if you get rid of log of x your life is you know very easy your life is going to be very easy and you can't solve this integral very easily right without the log of x so let's get rid of the log of x okay so we're going to generalize the problem by saying that okay a function i of t okay is going to be in terms of a new variable we're going to introduce t as the new variable is going to be equal to the same expression okay so integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of t we're going to substitute the number in here 15 into t okay and the purpose is so that we can get rid of log of x and you will see why so minus 1 divided by log of x dx okay now let's take a look at this and see what we can do now if we differentiate under the integral sign okay we're going to differentiate in terms of t because this is a function of t remember that the derivative okay in terms of t of x to the power of t is just going to be okay the same thing okay x to the t times ln of x and ln of x and log of x have something uh sim you know in common you can sort of eliminate something out of that, right? But not a log of x, okay, completely. So what we should do is we should change this expression. We're going to use the change of base formula. So we're going to have i of t is equal to the, the integral from 0 to 1 of x of, to the power of t minus 1 divided by ln of x over ln of 10 dx. ln of 10, 1 over ln of 10 is just a constant. We can bring it outside, okay? Because, uh, okay, so that's going to go up, right? Because we're dividing, so this is going to be equal to um, 
ln of 10 times the integral from 0 to 1, okay, of x to the power of t minus 1 divided by ln of x dx. Now we can differentiate i prime, okay, i of t. So let's find i prime of t. So that's the purpose, okay, that's Feynman's way of finding this. Okay, so let's take the derivative of i of t. So i prime of t, okay, is going to be equal to, okay, ln of 10 times the integral from 0 to 1. And then we're going to take the derivative inside of the integral. But to do that, we're going to take the partial derivative only, right? We're going to take the partial derivative with respect to t of x to the power of t minus 1 divided by ln of x dx. Now we know what that is. That's going to be ln of 10 integral from 0 to 1 x to the t ln of x. And the derivative of a constant is 0 divided by ln of x dx. The ln of x cancels out. So that, that's... That makes our lives a lot easier, okay, at this point. Now we have a new defined uh, function, right? The i, i prime of t, so the first derivative of i of t with respect to t, right? First time, uh, first derivative. So let's go ahead and see what we can do now. So i prime of t is going to be equal to ln of 10 times the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the power of t dx. Now we can okay evaluate this integral. It's a lot easier to evaluate this than this alone, right? So let's uh, integrate in terms of x, right? We're integrating in terms of x, so this is going to be equal to ln of 10 times x to the power of t plus 1 divided by t plus 1, okay, from 0 to 1. And we're going to get, okay, ln of 10, okay, times 1 to the power of t plus 1, okay, all of that divided by t plus 1. And then if we substitute by 0, that's just going to be 0, so we don't have to add that. Now, 1 to the power of t plus 1, what's that equal to? Well, 1 to the power of anything is just 1, right? So we have that this is equal to ln of 10 divided by t plus 1. This is i prime of t, okay? This is i prime of t. Now, we want to find this. We don't want to know this, right? So what we should do is we want to go backwards. So we're going to take the integral of i prime of t with respect to t again. And look at this. It's going to go very nice, okay, very nicely. So i of t, i of t, oh, Jesus, this is marker. i of t is going to be equal to, okay, the integral, okay, of ln of 10 divided by t plus 1. Uh, dt, okay? It's just an indefinite integral, okay? We're not defining any bounds, so if you recognize this, this is going to be ln, right? So we have that i of i of t is equal to, okay, ln of 10 times ln of the absolute value of 10 plus 1, okay? plus c, of course, there's a constant of integration because this is an indefinite integral, right? Now, let's go ahead and see what we can do now. Well, we know that when t, when t is equal to, when t is equal to 15, we have the original function, right? We have this, okay, this generalized function we, we established, right? i of t is this, when t is, is uh, 15, right? When 15 is, we change 15 into t. So let's go ahead and see if we could somehow find uh, the constant c, because we already have our initial value, right? This is our initial value, so let's go ahead and find i of 15. i of 15, when t equals to 15, is just this, right? So integral from 0 to, um, from zero to 1 of x to the power of 15 minus 1, right? All of that divided by log of x dx is equal to, okay, when t equals to 15, so that's going to be ln of 10 times ln of absolute value of 16 plus c. Okay, so when t equals to 15, that's not going to work out. 
because we're just going to get this, right? So how about we somehow get rid of this expression over here? But to do that, okay, we will have to make this, we will have to make this equal to one. How do we do that? Well, anything, okay, x to the power of zero is one, right? Anything to the power of zero is one. So how about we let t equal zero? So that didn't work out. So let's go ahead and try something else. So let t, okay, uh, approach zero. So we're going to have um, i of zero. Okay, it's going to be one minus one is zero. So that's going to be zero is equal to ln of 10, okay, times ln of one, right? Which is just zero, right? ln of one is zero. So that's, that goes away. So C is equal to zero. So we know that I of T is equal to ln of 10, okay, plus t plus 1, right? So we have that i of t is equal to ln of 10 times ln of, okay, the absolute value of t plus 1. This is i of, I of t, right? And we also have another expression for i of t, which is this over here. And we know that we're trying to find i of t when t is equal to 15, right? So how about we substitute 15 in here and see what this uh, is equivalent to. So let's see what i of 15 is. So we have i of 15 is equal to ln of 10 times ln of 15 plus 1, right? Absolute value. So we have that i of 15 is equal to ln of 10 times ln of 16. Okay, so that should, that should be the answer to this question. All right, so that's the answer, yeah. So look at that, integral from 0 to 1 of x to the 15 minus 1 divided by log of x dx is equal to, okay, is equal to ln of 10 times ln of 16. Okay, so this is Feynman's uh, method of integration. I hope you found it interesting, okay, it's very elegant, okay, to show it. So I guess I'll see you next time. Thank you.